Brad White, the chairman of the Republican Party, and also Joey Fillingain, join us right now to discuss this issue. Brad, I'm going to start with you. This has obviously been an issue for many, many years. What is the Republican Party doing right now to try to make this become law? Well, as we've said before, fair and honest elections was the foundation of our democracy. And this is not anything new, not a new idea. Many states, as we were talking a while ago, have voter ID, photo voter ID. But it's something that's been debated over and over again, and the leadership in the Mississippi House have blocked it every way that they could. And we feel like the only way that the people would have an opportunity to vote on this, or to have a voice on this, would be to vote on it, to have it on the ballot. Uh, there's been instances, I was in a House Elections Committee hearing the other day, and they were talking about how, where is the need for it? You know, we don't need photo voter ID at all. There's no evidence that this is something that would help ensure fair and honest elections. We've had situations last year where uh, an individual showed up to vote in the coast and they recognized one of the signatures that had voted prior to them. They said, this guy didn't vote. He was my neighbor. He died last year. There was a situation in Rankin County where an individual was caught trying to vote twice. There's been situations in Jeff Davis County where two dead people voted. One guy voted that was in the hospital all day, but somehow he showed up and voted at the death. So we think it's very important to have it, but we also think it's important to have it in the right way, and that's with a photo ID, and that's what Senator Fillingain is trying to accomplish through this initiative. Now, Senator, how is this going to come about? Well, it's a um, statewide process. You have to get 12% um, of the number of folks who voted in the last gubernatorial election to sign a petition asking for this to be placed on the ballot. And um, they have to be gathered from all over the state. No one little pocket can generate the 80,000 plus signatures. So Brad with the party is uh, helping us organize the petition drive and that will be kicked off probably within the next two to three weeks. And the goal is to have it on the ballot for this November? Well, it won't be for this November. You have to um, still give the legislature another uh, shot or bite at the apple. And so the goal is to have it back to the legislature 90 days before the year in which you would like to have it on the ballot. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us, obviously. It goes through several bureaucratic steps. And I have to say that the Secretary of State's office and the Attorney General's Office Elections Division have been very helpful, both of them, in getting the um, you know procedures all done so that we know once we start collecting the signatures that everything uh, is right and that we have all the laws the way they need to be. And real quickly, you feel pretty confident the only way that this is going to become law is if the voters make it happen because the legislature will probably defeat it yet again. I do. I'm an eternal optimist and I'm not giving up on the legislative process. This is my tenth year in the legislature and I'm going to continue fighting uh, within the confines of the legislature to try to get it passed. But as Brad said, it's just um, very discouraging when the Senate passes the bill every year and the House stymies it there in the Elections uh, Committee. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Obviously a heated issue on both sides. Thank you for coming in this thank morning. You. We thank really you appreciate it. All right, still to come on 16 WAPT.